Senator Scott Dibble is the champion of the Safe and Supportive Schools Act. He's here to talk about what he's going to do with this legislation in 2014. Thanks for joining us today, Great. Senator. Thanks, Julie. So let's remind viewers before we get into the what's next, mm -hmm. what exactly your bill would require school districts to do? Um, well, the bill itself is uh, fairly simple in its conception and its construction. Um, the, probably the most important thing is that schools uh, would be required to adopt um, effective, comprehensive anti-bullying policies and communicate those uh, clearly uh, to the students, uh, to teachers, uh, to school administration, and of course to the community and, and to parents. And um, um, it would make sure that uh, procedures and processes were in place to respond in a timely fashion uh, to reports of bullying, make it clear what, what bullying is, uh, make, it, make sure that all kids are protected within those policies, particularly those kids who receive a disproportionate amount of bullying on the basis of prejudice and the like. Um, and, uh, and then it would make available to schools um, training uh, so that schools could really engage in best practices so that the adults who are responsible for making sure that bullying is responded to um, can respond effectively. Um, then also make available uh, to schools on a voluntary basis um, some guidance and some help and some, some uh, technical assistance in doing the kind of work that we really are trying to accomplish, which is uh, prevention, so that bullying doesn't really become, uh, recedes as a major issue in schools because we know um, for a fact from all the research, all the evidence, all the work that we've done over the last past few years that bullying is a real issue. It has real consequence in kids' lives. It's very harmful. Not just the kids who are the targets of bullying, but all kids who, who are a part of a climate in which bullying is allowed to occur. And something can be done about it. We can prevent bullying. And even opponents of your legislation concur with the thought that Minnesota has one of the weakest anti-bullying mm -hmm. pieces of legislation currently. Right. So the different the, the levels of support really vary. Mm -hmm. And even the executive director of the Minnesota School Board Association said members of his group would support efforts to prevent bullying, but simply they, quote, want a better bill. Mm -hmm. What to these, to these people who aren't completely on board, what constitutes a better bill? Well, they'll have to speak for themselves. The Minnesota, Minnesota School Boards Association has asked for a number of changes in the legislation, and we've accommodated every single one of their changes. So um, in this interim year, they've gone back um, to to think of more things to change in the bill. I have to be honest, Julie, I don't think the School Boards Association has been at the table in good faith. They resisted and tried to defeat the bill in previous years, um, uh, and they have been resistant to receiving any direction. They, Why they, so? Why do you think I, that's the I case? Think it's a, I think it's a standard response that they, that they give to any sort of uh, policy change that comes from the, from the legislature. They don't like to be told what to do. The thing to pay attention to in the bill, though, is we provide for a tremendous amount of local initiative and local control. We don't mandate um, forms of discipline. We don't mandate uh, any sort of staffing ratios. We you know, don't mandate the, the expenditure of a lot of money. Schools are already spending a lot of money, and they probably will end up spending a lot less money um, if they do this anti-bullying work and this bullying response work effectively. Um, but it's, it's, uh, if, if you ask anyone who's on the education committee, anyone who works in education issues, School Boards Association resists any initiatives that come out of the legislature just as a knee-jerk matter of course reaction. And you're using the word mandate. It's something that the opponents mm -hmm. use quite heavily mm -hmm. as well. And you've stated in committee that this is not a mandate. It's encouraging schools to develop a program and curriculum that addresses the overachieving issue of climate so bullying can be addressed. Right. So, but isn't this essentially an unfunded mandate to the tune of $39 million? That's what the opponents cite. Right, right. That's false, uh, utterly false. Uh, you know, there was a very, very uh, uh, poorly constructed, what they call local impact note, that they went back and revised significantly and brought down the estimated cost significantly. But keep in mind, we provided uh, significant revenue for schools to address this issue. Um, some of that revenue will be just kind of a one-time effort of establishing these policies and communicating them effectively to the whole school community, one-time expenditure. And we provided an you know, additional $450 million bucks to schools um, uh, this last year. Plus, we provided the opportunity for local levies to be used for uh, uh, school safety and school security matters. Um, so there is no unfunded mandate. There's already money being spent in this arena as well. A lot of it's going to be one-time. And all, over time, costs are going to come down quite significantly. School students are going to be achieving uh, much better academically. Schools are going to be safer. There's going to be far less exposure to legal liability to, for failure to protect kids. And just a refresher for our viewers, this bill did make it through the process last session. 
it didn't make it to the floor. There was some question on whether or not it would on that final day of, of session. Well, it, did, it did get taken up on the floor, just didn't receive its final vote. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the clarification. So what's next? What are you going to do with this Oh, so we'll just simply uh, go back to the last committee in which it uh, um, appeared, which is the Finance Committee, and we'll have kind of another kind of final hearing, get it back to the floor of the Senate, maybe make some changes to the extent that the School Boards Association has brought up some additional issues that we can tweak and nudge. Now keep in mind, we've already changed probably a dozen or more provisions in the bill to accommodate the school boards and the school associations even testified in committee that we had accommodated every single concern of theirs. They've got some new ones, that's fine. We'll take a look at which ones are legitimate and change those things that we need to. Make those changes in committee, get it back to the floor, um, uh, vote it on the floor, send it to the House where hopefully it'll be in, in sufficient form that uh, the House can accept it. Um, they'll take their final vote and it'll go to the governor. Senator, my last question for you is, is it more important to you to get something passed that strengthens what we currently have, mm -hmm. even if it's not as strong as what's currently in place? Well, I think already we have a bill um, that in which a lot of really important provisions were dropped because they actually do represent some expense or we need some more conversation. Issues around teacher licensure and teacher training, for example. That gets us into a whole different conversation around uh, higher ed issues and, and teacher licensure. Um, uh, uh, some, some work around social emotional curriculum. That's a lot of work that takes a lot of time and needs a lot of buy-in and that sort of thing. Um, so we, you know, there, there are a number of recommendations that came out of the governor's task force on the prevention of bullying that we just didn't pursue. So um, we have a bill I think that represents a really, really good compromise, provides for local control um, and, 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 and uh, prevention ultimately, which is what we're after. Okay, Senator Scott Dibble, as always, thank you for your time. We appreciate Great. it. Thank you so much, Julie.